Well, Duluth's race for mayor in 2023 is shaping up to be quite competitive. Incumbent Emily Larson announced her intent to run for a third term this past December. And then last month, our next guest announced he was running for mayor. Joining us now is candidate Roger Reinert, a former state senator and Duluth City Council. Well, Roger, thank you very much. Appreciate you being on the yeah. program tonight. I guess, I guess the obvious question is, why do you want why? to be the mayor of Duluth? <laughs> After I've been away from this for a half a dozen years, sure. you know, it, it wasn't something that was really in my mind or even on my heart until people just started asking and talking. And it was kind of a process of, uh, no thanks, life is pretty good uh, I, and comfortable right now to really, you know, I'm not somebody who's wired to look at things that I think could be better and, and stay on the sidelines. You know, I'm sort of a call to mission kind of guy and I, you know, our campaign slogan is expect more, do better. And that really is something that speaks to me. And I, I think I bring a skill set to the table of uh, being able to contribute mm -hmm. to that. Mm -hmm. So what would your primary goals be if elected? Sure. I mean, really, we're talking about three th big things. One is um, we need the city to really focus on core city services, streets and utilities and public safety, parks and libraries. You know, when you are out talking to uh, Duluthians, that's what they're saying. We're seeing property taxes go up. Um, we're seeing inflation, but we're also actually seeing a degradation of core city services in a sense that those are not the, the priority of the city. And of course, you know, city, that's why city government exists, to really deliver on those core city services. Two, just lots of stories about how the city can be a better partner, whether you're starting a business, expanding a business, trying to build something. It's, it's challenging interacting with the city. And then for me, you know, personally, kind of having a civic educator background, the last time we had a meaningful race for mayor was 2007. And four years ago, we only had 38% voter turnout in Duluth, Minnesota. So those are three really compelling reasons for me. So what would you do differently, Roger, than Emily Larson and your approach to city needs? Sure, and I'll, I'll, I'll say I don't view it as us running against each other. I think there are gonna be other good candidates. I hope there are because mm -hmm. we need a robust conversation about Duluth's next chapter. But what my primary focus is, is those couple things. I wanna really focus on core city services. I want taxpayers to say, we're getting what we're paying for, effective and efficient. I'm seeing it in my streets. I'm seeing it in my neighborhood park, my community club. I'm seeing it in tax based development and additional housing in the community. I mean, those are the things that we have to have the city do. And honestly, I, I wanna have our city employees say, we love working for the city. Um, and right now you're not getting that when you talk with various city employees. Um, you know, th there's no city without city employees. Mm -hmm. So you're seeking the DFL endorsement, and yes. if you've stated that you'd plan to run regardless. Absolutely. If you yep. don't receive the endorsement, how will that affect your strategy in this race? Well, of course, it's a nonpartisan race, um, and city government is meant to be nonpartisan. I think back to when I was a city councilor, I was always on the D side of the fence, but I had good relationships with the entire council, no matter how liberal or how conservative they were. Mm -hmm. I took that with me to the legislature where I started the Purple Caucus. We had Democrats and Republicans that sat together and said, hey, we're Minnesotans first and these other labels second. So it really doesn't impact my approach. I mean, I've been in elected office for a long time. People know where I've been. They've seen my work. And to me, city government is really about those relationships and bringing people together that have different viewpoints. And we're not good mm -hmm. at, as a community and we're not good as a society at doing that anymore. Um, but I think that's something I still can do is bring, bring folks together from divergent viewpoints to, to move forward on issues. Where do you see Duluth going in the next 10 years? So we really need to get kind of our basics back in um, on solid ground. And we need to say to Duluthians and to others that we're a great place to be. We're a, we're a wonderful place to move your business. We're a wonderful place to grow your family. We're a wonderful place to maybe come uh, when you're more towards the end of your career. You know, and right now we're not putting our best billboard up because just move around the community. You see the challenges with our streets. You see the issues with utilities. You see the issues with public safety. And in order to grow where we need to be, and we need to grow. Mm -hmm. um, we need to grow our population. We need to grow our tax base. We need to grow our business community because that's the revenue that the city uses to spend on the things we all want. Mm -hmm. You know, and we saw that last year with an 8% levy increase along with about 8% inflation. 
And I think that's the reason that the, the park levy failed, is people just said, hey, I'm paying a lot and I'm not seeing the outcome. And so growing that tax base and growing that business base allows us to do those things with less pressure on our homeowners mm -hmm. and create a community that people want to come to and we can grow. Last, in the last census, every regional center in Minnesota um, had somewhere around 10% population growth and we were celebrating around 4%. And, then, you know, and, and we've fallen from the third largest community in the state to around, I think we're sixth now. Um, so you know, our Duluth pride should be hurt by that. And with that, Roger, we have to call it quits. Right. We thank, thank you, you very much for being on the Appreciate program it. tonight. Good to see you both. All right, thank you. Thanks.